Welcome back to more high watt development on uh, this project to get my DR103 up to stock. I have a original Partridge transformer that I bought online off Reverb. Was told that it came out of a 60s Sound City amp, that everything worked, and that it had 16, 8, and 4 ohm taps for the output for the secondary side of the transformer. Uh, we're going to test it out. We're going to do a couple basic tests. I'm going to show you how to do the most basic test with just measuring resistance. And then also we're going to plug into my Variac, the lab volt, and apply some voltage across this thing to figure out our turns ratio. See if we can kind of confirm through some math um, what our actual primary impedance is uh, to see if it matches up with what it should be. To start off, this is not something you should do unless you know how to work safely around voltages. Um, we are going to be applying not too much, maybe like 20 volts or so AC to this, but um, and I had to do a little bit of research to figure out that uh, I did find a couple diagrams for similar transformers. So these two are going to be the center taps. So I'm going to tie them together on the primary side of this. And then the other funny thing is we have doubled wires for each color here on the secondary. Uh, and it turns out I found just one comment on a thread on the music electronics forum um, stating that the, the these are basically doubled secondaries and it does appear to be the case these don't have continuity to each other um, but I do seem to get values that make sense with everything doubled up so if anybody knows differently about any of this in the comments please let me know this is I've tested other transformers before but uh, this is kind of new territory, working with this Partridge one. I have not tested one of these. So the important thing here is that we isolate all of the wires, except for those that we assume or know to be safe to connect together. Um, isolate each. We're going to be very careful when there's voltage on this to not brush our knuckles against anything. Even these terminals that are inside here, if you accidentally touch, you'd get zapped. So you want to be very conscious of that. Um, and then we want to make sure that all wires are connected and isolated. Even if we're not going to be testing them, we want them to be connected and not just be a flying lead that's in a position where it could accidentally short something out and hurt our transformer or more importantly, hurt ourselves. Um, so let's start off with the resistance checks. This is something anybody can do at home. You're not going to hurt anything. Uh, the only thing that makes this kind of test dangerous at all is the second test we're going to do where we actually apply voltage. But anybody can take a meter, set it to resistance, and then probe around and measure between wires and see what you can get that makes sense. See if things are connected in a way that makes sense. Make yourself a little diagram to get a good idea of what's going on with your transformer. So here we go. We'll do that test now. I'll show you what I've found so far. So we can see between these wires, we have 13.8 ohms there, 12.8 there. Ideally, these would be the same. And then double that across the two. And we'll see when we do this with voltage too, we'll get, if we apply a voltage to these two, so these would be your two wires that are going to go to your power tubes. And then these are the center tap in the center of the coil right here. So this should be from either of these wires to this should be half in both voltage when applied or in resistance. Um, and then on this side, the way that I have these arranged, I don't, I don't know which one of these is two, four, eight or 16. Um, and actually I don't know if this is actually a two ohm, um, or the, what, whichever fourth one is a two ohm, since I was told this was a four, eight and 16, 
Um, but we do have an extra pair here, so this could actually be uh, something else. But uh, but yeah, going again, you can see we get some amount of resistance there, 0.3 ohms. Going to these other guys, 0.4, which seems very close. 0.5 and 2.2. So you would assume, you know, and, and we actually do have resistance between all of these, right? Because these are just different taps across the coil. So it's one continuous coil that we're tapping into different points. So these would be connected. Now the important thing here that we want to test for, so we don't have a connection between our primary and our secondary anywhere. If we did, that would show that we have a short circuit to the coil or to the outer casing from either the primary or the secondary. So you actually really want to make sure you test this, make sure nothing is connected from primary to secondary before applying any voltage, because that's going to let the magic smoke out if you do. And there's no putting that back in. Um, so that's a good test. Now, Really with a resistance check on something like this, it's not an ideal test. Um, the way that transformers work and the way that they fail, they have stacks of coils. And those coils of wire have very, very thin insulation on them that can melt. And then suddenly your stack of coils that's this tall is instead this tall. And unfortunately, those issues could be there and we wouldn't measure them you may measure them from a resistance test like this, but they also may only show up when under power, when under a higher voltage or an operating voltage that's typical to the transformer uh, because the insulation won't break down until there's that potential across it. So ideally you would use something called an insulation tester that applies a set voltage like four, six, 400, 600, uh, maybe even a thousand volts uh, those are sometimes called Magers because that was a brand that made them back in the day. You would wind it up and then uh, apply your voltage and not shock your friends. Please don't do that. Um, and I don't actually have an insulation tester, so we're not going to do that test. I can't show you that, but I can show you how to hook it up to a variac, uh, a variable AC, um, and do a similar test with a low voltage. But again, the important thing here is that we found that we don't have any short circuit between primary or secondary. Uh, another thing to test is just that we don't, to our actual chassis, don't have any kind of short circuit. That is another way that transformers can fail, is if the coil fails to the inner core that the coil is wrapped around, um, which then could cause a short circuit and would be not good. Okay, so let's jump into our voltage check here. So we are set to AC volts on our meter. Um, I am hooked up to my Variac and I once again recommend not doing this unless you know how to safely do so. Um, you could, yeah, you could really hurt yourself. Um, and uh, don't want you to do that. So I'm going to verify here my voltage that I want to apply. So I'm going to hold this with one hand and turn on my Variac. And we're going to start off real low. There's also a, oh nice, we landed right on 666 to start out. Um, so this is milliamps. We're not applying much. Uh, I'm going to bring it up to about 20 volts. And there's a really great walkthrough of a similar type of test on RG Keen's website, geofex.com. If you're interested in seeing a detailed procedure for different types of transformer test, he lays it out pretty well. So let's get this up to about 20 volts. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're sending 20 volts in to our primary side of the transformer. And again, we can verify that we would have half of that going to our center tap here. There's 10, there's another 10, so that's good. These connections are all good. 
And now if we go over here, we can see we'll have some lower proportion of that. So we're, because our turn ratio is high to low between primary and secondary side, our voltage is gonna match our turns ratio. So it should be a higher voltage here and a lower voltage to each of these taps. And we can see, okay, there's 1.145, 1.58, 1.56, 5.843. Okay, so did I get these in ascending order? I think I maybe did. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is record those. First of all, I'm going to turn off the variac so we're being nice and safe, and then turn it down all the way. Um, so I'm going to record those values, and then we can do a little bit of math to kind of assuming a 16 uh, ohm coil or secondary is our highest, um, we can kind of reverse the math on this to make a educated assumption. I don't want to say a, a guess or a, um, or even a certain certainty of this, but an educated assumption as to what the primary impedance is in relation to the secondary, since we can now know what our know for sure what our voltage uh, turns ratio is, or voltage ratio and turns ratio um, from these measured values, and then making an assumption of eight, or let's say 16, eight and four ohms. Um, yeah, so I'll do that math and then show you guys how I did that. All right, so it's time for some math here. I've recorded our values here. So we put in 20 volts to our primary side, um, showing that our black wires here were our center taps. And then I'm making an assumption here, but I'm saying that this lowest voltage would be our four ohm, with the black being the common, the brown, the next set, uh, with the next highest voltage would be our eight, the yellow would be our 16. And then I forgot with these high watts, they have something on the back called the 100 volt line, which was a, I think an old system used for plugging straight into like a loudspeaker system uh, for like guys playing stadiums and stuff like that. I honestly don't know too much about this and I'm gonna look into it. Um, but it is the full tap of the transformer. I actually found schematics that show that 100 volt line is the largest set of the stack of the coil. So we can assume that that is the 100 volt line and then work backwards off these numbers. Now, uh, it's important to know that the turns ratio is the same as the voltage ratio. And that is equal to the square root of the primary resistance divided by the secondary resistance. So we can work backwards from these numbers to see if we're in the ballpark. Now this won't be exact since we are treating this um, as a, you know, the, the higher the voltage that we applied here, I think the closer we would get, because we are slightly off from what I've read online for the primary resistance, but I think it'll still be okay. Um, so we can see if we take for our, our turns ratio, which is our voltage ratio, the 20 volts divided by the 1.48 that we get here, we get 17.42 as a turns ratio. We then square that to undo the square root on this side to get 303.51. And then multiply that by our assumed impedance from the output, the four ohms, and we get 1214, 1,214 ohms. Now the expected, if everything was ideal in a perfect world, uh, I've read 1750 is what we want for the high watt primary impedance. The cool thing about this though, is we can actually double check our value for each of these taps. So I've done that math here for each of them and you can see it actually matches up pretty close. So 1214 for the four ohm, 1216 for the eight or 1261, sorry. And then 1218 for the 16 ohm. Um, and I think we're gonna call that close enough. We, we've confirmed that this transformer doesn't have any shorts no short circuits between primary or secondary. 
Um, we know for a fact that there's nothing shorting between the wires that shouldn't be between these taps. Uh, just normal connections there. None of the primary side are shorted to the secondary. Neither side is shorted to the chassis. So we're going to be safe to hook up. Uh, and we are close enough on that primary impedance that we're not going to put too much strain on our tubes or anything like that. It should be pretty dang good. Um, I may do some further tests. I may ramp up the voltage off the Variac, something closer to what we might see in the amp, just to see if that number gets closer to the ideal um, 1700 ohms or so. But I think we can say that this transformer is ready to go, ready to rock. So uh, parts actually showed up today. So I'm gonna start working on this amp and hopefully we'll have an update video for that. I'll probably do a uh, full video showing you the full repair and then do a pared down version of that as well for people that don't wanna watch an hour long video. Thanks again for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're enjoying this. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see. And uh, yeah, hope you all are having a great day. Thanks again.